you know, we've all been told to uh, ponder our roles in Nigeria's present situation. How much has the media contributed to the mess that we seem to be in right now? Lot. A lot of people tend to believe what they read, and after reading it, then they begin to say it's a lie, but they still follow it. So, depending upon your source that you believe in, that's where you go. And because a lot of them are sponsored, when I say sponsored, the bottom line is cash, but it might not necessarily be cash because of So they put out there what they want you. The editors decide what they want you to read. Our job, really, is to report what you see and leave it on up to the public to determine what is right or wrong. We are guilty as a body of doing so. Now, even when you write the truth, for example, you keep writing the truth, there will always be some people that will say, eh, you are talking good for this side and bad for that side. There was a president I was talking to once who complained to me so much, and I said, if you say we are writing bad, tell us the good things that you do. But one problem that we have, you will put out a press release. We even had a problem with the governor. You put out a press release and say everybody should write it. But when you give us a press release and you say you did 16 boreholes in one community, before we write it, we are going to go to that community and check those boreholes and ask the people about those boreholes, the history of it, and it's what we see there that we report. Now, when it differs from the press release you put out, you say, punch is at it again. But you are the one who told us about the boreholes, and we're excited for you. So we went there to go and write the story on it, and then you don't like it. Or you put out a general picture of some politician or some big man somewhere, a governor, president, a particular thing, and the picture, we don't like it. But we have a better picture. That is what we want to use because we feel it fits the story. And you get angry that that was the, story, that was the picture you wanted. You want to dictate to us. We don't want that. We need to have the right to be able to report the facts as it is. When we don't do so, then you take us to task. But until then, leave us alone. The e-newspapers. Yes. are getting more and more popular and yes. more media houses like yours are paying a lot of attention to their online presence. How much longer do you think we will have the newspaper around? Well, you see, the world trend is that it is dying. It has been overtaken. But you see, uh, uh, very unfortunately, I don't believe so. And why? The, 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 the foundation of education for any, any society, is a reading culture. Now, if you get our children interested in reading today, there'll be, there'll be as so many of them will spend time reading, they won't have time to be on the streets looking for uh, antisocial behavior. So we are, uh, some of us, a very few of us, are making an effort to bring about a revival of the reading culture in this country. Unfortunately, any time you come up with a new idea, government comes out with a new way of taxing the idea. Even before you get to it, they want to tax it. So they make education hard. I once said this. Reduce taxes and import duties on educational material and see the country change. That's the, that, that, that is my number one belief. You tackle corruption, another angle, which is not corruption cannot tackle corruption. But import, uh, education, make education cheaper. Everybody will rush there. You know, I know you're very passionate about the youth. How can the young people make a difference in our politics? You see, unfortunately, there are a lot of young people who really want to do something. But they need a stepping stone. They need a ladder to be able to get to the next level. And though that ladder or the stepping stones that they need are the same people who we tell them, no, come through the back door and use a rope. That's how I got there. That's the way I know. So when they try to use a the ladder, they will yank it from under them. But recently, I was at a forum where I told some emerging leaders that 
get yourselves together. Do like a particular group in Nigeria are doing right now, trying to take over this country. You can take the country back. Amongst yourselves, find one or two people of integrity and back them. Don't ask them what they are for any financial rewards. Back them all the way. Vote for them, campaign for them. Make sure they find favor with you at every single time so that they begin to get into positions of authority. Whether it is in government or in business, in any place, we need to begin to start because the middle and the top is basically rotten. So you have fresh soil. We need to start. But they must start by themselves. They can't keep relying on the so-called godfathers who will say, first of all, let's go to a shrine before you can get anywhere. That's, that's the only message I have. You, you are the firstborn of a founder of Punch, so you are running a family business. Yes. On behalf of your siblings. Of course. What are the challenges in that, and how do you overcome them? <sighs> there will always be the challenge. The, the, the number one challenge is, why is he doing that? There must be something in it for him. That's why he's doing it. That's the number one thing. There, so there will always come be distrust because they want to be suspicious. Not that they can do it better. But once you have an interest in something, some people will put it in their minds that, uh, oh, it's because he has a personal interest. But the major thing, why, you see, I have been many places where people have said businesses don't survive maybe beyond the first generation of the founder. And Punch has been used in business school and so, in so many places, uh, law school even, as a case study. And why is that so? Because there is enough benefit coming to my siblings to make them say, well, if he's doing bad and this is like this, let us leave him alone. If he does good now, it might change. But that's, that's, the, that's number one. Two. It is very hard to teach an old dog new tricks. You have your own ideas. You want this thing to go another way. But I met a lot of people there. And just common sense tells me, you don't just go in there and upset the apple, apple cart. Because there was time we tried to change something there. And from within, they sabotaged. We were offline. Our digital went offline for a long time. We had a collaboration of people within and out who didn't want a new way, but we suffered it. So I have gradually and painfully allowed old ways, some old ways to continue, even when it's eating me that I know we can do better than this. And I've had to tell them at times that everybody has made mistakes. Even the former chairman made mistakes, otherwise he'd be Jesus Christ. So I'm going to make some, but it is a crime not to try. It's not a crime to fail. But obviously, if you have put everything together and you say it's going to work, that's why businesses keep going down. I'm the one out there looking for new ways, together with the competent people, management that I have, for new ways to do certain things. But if I, if I have a vision, it is my vision, and I want to bring it across, until somebody else buys into that vision, they will say, is talking rubbish. Finally, let me tell you this. A lot of people have invented a lot of things. When they start thinking around with all kinds of things, people look at it and say, he's a mad scientist. He's just, I don't mind him. But the day it works, everybody will say he's a genius. Hardly would you find people who will go along the road with you to create something. They want to celebrate you when you have achieved it. Mr. Wale Abode, we thank you for your time. <laughs> thank you very much. And we thank you for watching. Please join us next time when the program returns. But between now and then, do let us continue this conversation online at channelstv.com. Tweet me your thoughts at Modili Thank you again for watching. And we hope to see you again soon.